Hi everybody, my name is Lamari Boozy and today we will be painting a winter wonderland. This is our example that we've provided. I'm going to show you your kits. These are the kits that we provide. They come with a canvas, a few paints, and a paintbrush. As you can see, we provide everything for you so that you're able to complete this beautiful masterpiece. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be using this uh, seven by nine canvas. They do come a little loose in the pack. So what we have suggested is that we Damp the back of the canvas right here with a little bit of water. I'm going to do that now. And as you can see, I've laid everything on top of a little newspaper just to keep it a little clean, just in case you don't want paint over everything. As you can see, just adding a little water on the back tightens it all up. It doesn't wet the canvas on the front at all. It just tightens it up because the canvas did come a little loose when we ordered them. You know, supply chain issues and all. All right. So where we're gonna start with first is the little cabin in the back. So you're gonna grab your brown. We're gonna grab our little paintbrush here. I do suggest playing some music in the background, you know, just to have fun and enjoy yourself because it can get a little silent painting by yourself. And all artists enjoy a good song, you know, while painting. Just in case you're wondering, I am currently listening to Bohemian Rhapsody. Very good song by Queen, personally. I'm obsessed. <laughs> All of the paints that we are using today are acrylic. However, you will want to wait for it to dry just a little bit before adding your new layer. So apply lightly with all the paints. It'll just help it dry faster before you're moving on to your next layer. And don't be like me and get paint all over your hands, but it's the fun of the creative process. I'm trying to save as much paint as possible here. You don't have to do the same, but you know, I'm trying to keep everything as thin as possible just so that it dries quickly.
All right, now we're gonna give this a little time to dry. Now we are going to move on to our next layer. So now you're gonna grab your lighter shade of yellow. And just our little orange here. Now we're gonna start making our windows. Just grab a little bead. What we're looking for in the windows are a little ombre effect to just give a little illumination. Adds a little fun to our nice little house here. Personally, I'm living in my Bob Ross era. <laughs> I'm having fun with this as we go. I had a little too much water on my brush. It was getting everywhere. Let's try that one more time. But that's like the fun of art, you know? Like, nothing is really a mistake. Like Bob Ross would say, everything is a happy little accident. Nothing has to be perfect. Nothing has to look the same. Just have fun. There we go. I'm also wiping my brush down on my newspaper. Quite helpful. Now we're gonna move on to our door. With our door, we're gonna take our red. We're looking for more of a slanted look. So try and make the top of your door just a slightly little angle. Just a slight one. Doesn't have to be too angled. It just adds a little to the perspective. A little depth is good. As you can see in my example, it doesn't look this exact shade of red. What I had done when I originally did the sample is I mixed a little of the colors. So just in case you want to try, you can mix a little bit with the red, some orange, a little bit of yellow, and just a little brown. But you want to add a little more red than anything. It adds to the more amber color of the door that we're looking for. I'm gonna add a little more red to mine. Just cause I like to give it more of a woody look cause it looks a little more realistic. Perfect. I like that. Right. So now, hold on. Oh dear. All right. So now we're going to move towards our border or onto our border. My apologies. So 
So the Dwarf of the Door is more of a yellowish color. You can either use a lighter yellow or the dark or the more mustard looking yellow. Up to you. I think I might just mix both of them together. See what I get. Let me add a little orange. Remember, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. As long as you're having fun, you're doing good. And trust the process. It might not look like it's coming together now, but by the time we're done with this, you'll have a beautiful little Winter Wonderland. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to take that same mustard color that we had before. We're going to add steps to our house. Remember that the house is a little angled. We're looking for perspective here. So, so are your steps. All right. Now you are going to grab your white and we're going to start working on our roof. So with snow, because snow is not completely purely white at all times, we're going to take our white and just add a little dash of blue. My white is getting a little yellow in it because I'm painting with the same brush. So we're going to take our blue and just add a little dot. Just a little. You do want it to be more white than anything, but the blue will add on to the depth of the snow. I'm gonna grab some more white. Perfect. All right. Oh, I'm going to paint all over myself. That's always fun. You can make your roof as wide or as slim as you want to. If you're doing this at home, what I would suggest is letting all of the layers dry as you go, but I'm doing this in one sitting, so we're just taking one shot. But don't worry, as we're, we add on, the layers will dry and it'll come out wonderful. Right, so now let me just finish this up. I'm going to add a little more blue to the white now and now we're going to start adding our shading. Our snow is nice and beautiful. So now I'm gonna grab my blue, add more to my white. I'm 
And we're going to add that as a little shade. And you can make this as dark or as light as you want to. Ooh, that's beautiful. As we continue to add more layers, it'll start looking more and more realistic. So just trust the process. Cleaning off my brush. I'm just going, gonna go on just a little straight blue, add more to the depth of the snow and the shading. And then I'm gonna go over it with some more white just to blend that all in. using long strokes to mix that in. Perfect. My laptop seems to really enjoy not staying open. All right. Ooh, I did forget we are going to add a third little dot of just some yellow right on top of our door. This will turn into a lantern later on in our painting. That's the fun part of painting, it's just a little process, you know? Perfect. Now we are going to move on to our trees, so take your brush and clean it off as best as possible. And now you're gonna take your pure white. Mine has a little blue in it. And we're just gonna start doing small little strokes. You can make your trees as wide as you want to. Just take small little strokes that represents the little snow on our wonderful trees. Personally, I don't like dealing with snow because if you live on Long Island, you have to shovel and uh, it's not too fun. But I hope one day I'll get to enjoy a little cabin where I don't have to shovel. I just get to enjoy the snow. Just small little strokes, nothing too serious. 
I'm gonna go back in, add more to my trees. And I cannot stress this enough, nothing has to be perfect. Just gotta have fun with it. There is so much perfection and imperfection. My fat little tree. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to our next few trees. You are allowed to add as much or as little trees as possible in your background. It's all up to your own discretion. I want to make my, this tree a little taller. I would just like to advise everyone, again, please listen to music. It makes the process so much more fun. Nicki Minaj has just entered my playlist and I'm enjoying myself. And do not forget to dance during the creative process. It adds so much more to your artwork. Of course, the people viewing your art won't see that you danced, but you will know that you had fun. <laughs> awesome. Mm, I think I'm gonna add one more tree in the corner. I'm gonna go back, just add a little bit more to this tree, the tree in my foreground. He's looking a little chubby, but you know, we like chubby trees. That means he's healthy. Awesome. And now we're gonna add a small little tree just in the corner of our home. You are supposed to use your palette, by the way. <laughs> Don't do what I do. Perfect. All right, now we're going to add a little more blue. Or no, we're going to grab our blue. We take our blue. I'm just using the mix of white and blue that I had earlier. And we're gonna put this on our tree to add some shadow. Just as we did on our house. In this process, you can stipple, you can do the small little strokes that we did before, up to you.
Sorry, I got distracted with my little dance. I think I'm going to grab just some white with more blue. I'm going to see if I add a little brown to it, if it'll darken the color a little bit. I'll take it. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to start painting our, for our snow. Please remember that art is messy. Nothing should be clean about this. Make as much of a mess as you need, because that's what makes the process fun. I'm gonna mix a little more color. Actually, let me see. Resourceful artists, let nothing go to waste. Take a little brown, mix that in. It gives us a nice murky gray color. Can add a little more blue. Just to keep everything the same color. Let's see. Close enough. I think I'm going to add a little hill right here. Make things a little fun. Because this ground is a little flat. I think I might add one more hill right here too. You know, because snow is not flat. Maybe you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do for our path is we're going to take that similar color and just add a little more brown. Got to remix my colors a little bit. A little bit of white. Mix that in. Actually, let me see how this works with the red.
beautiful. It's a little similar in shade. Let's add a little more red. The beauty about art is that you can create so many colors with just red, yellow, and blue. It really helps you understand color theory better. All that fun stuff. It's still and that is the bell ringing. Apologies for that. Nice. I got a nice grayish color. Perfect. I like that. I'm just gonna overlay it with a little blue. Beautiful. Now what we are going to do is we are going to take our white and essentially do what we did up on our roof. Add a little blue. I hope you can see my mixing. If not, I am mixing just a little white with a little blue on the side. Beautiful. I think I'm going to take a little bit of my green. Not green, silly me, gray. And now we're just gonna paint that over like that. Because it just adds to the texture. This is a nice, nice, wonderful, snowy texture. Because the world world isn't flat, so your paintings don't have to be flat either. This is a really nice blue. I think I'm going to go in with just a little more white to highlight it. So let's finish up with this first. I hope you guys can see me well. I haven't even checked to see if you guys can see my painting. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go in with just a little white, just straight out of the, it would be smart to wipe my brush. Clean it up a little bit. Oh, I do suggest that you have a cup of water. I've been using a cup of water. Doesn't look too much like coffee, but you know, be careful who you're around. You don't want to accidentally drink paint water. It's happened to artists that haunts our stories. The process doesn't have to be perfect. And that is the second bell. You kids better get to class. I think I'm gonna put this in my palette just so that I don't have to keep adding more and more blue to my pure white. Yeah. 
If you don't have a palette, a paper plate also works pretty well. Probably should have said that earlier. Just overlaying it with a little white, adding to the texture. I like it. <laughs> this is looking more and more fun as we go. If you don't want to add white to yours, you don't have to. You know, just add to the texture. In my opinion, anyways. I like the way it looks. It's coming together real nicely. Sweet! Alright. Now we are going back to work on our house. Cleaning my brush up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this reddish color, oh not reddish, this yellow orangish color that we had before, add a little brown to it. We're just going to add a little shadow to our house, giving it some more 3D lifelike effects. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to take our blue. I am going to mix it with a little more brown in this gray right here. And if you have other paints at home, you can just use a darker blue if you like, just like I did in the example right here. What I did in the example is, as you can see, they're a little different because the shades of blue are different. But I used a really dark blue to make these lines that we're about to make. But no, no two paintings have to be the same. I like what's coming together, but I'm looking for more of a dark color. So let me see if I can add some red. I'm experimenting as I go. Eh, good enough. So what I'm going to do with this, let's see how this shows. Mm, let me see if I can add a little more blue to that. I'll take it. It is what it is.
All right. Cleaning my brush off now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a window pane, some texture to the door. So I'm going to take my brown. We're using our little palette here. This little section of our palette. I'm trying to see if I can make this brown just a little darker. Let's see. <clears throat> if you can't get there, it doesn't matter. Just try your best. He's blending into our background. Let me see. There we go. This window's looking a little wonky. That's okay. He's trying his best. <laughs> and now, I'm going to make my little light. Now we're going to add a little texture to the door. All right. Beautiful. Remember, nothing has to be perfect. As long as you are trying, it's good enough. I think I might go in just a little bit more. Over here. Wonderful. Make my roof a little lower. Beautiful. All right. Now we're gonna clean our brush just a little. We're going to go in with our orange. We're gonna highlight the windows in the house. Just slight little strokes, just like this. A little in the house, a little in the doors. There we go. Around our little lamp. And we're gonna go in and do it on the snow as well. Like I said, don't do what I do. You're usually supposed to, you know, use our little palette, but our palette is all full up. Actually, let me see. Good enough.
All right. You can also add a little to the trees. our little tree right here in the corner with a little embellishment beautiful all right <clears throat> It is important to clean off your brush even if you're cleaning off in the same bucket is clean and wipe it clean and wipe all right so now we're going to take a little white and just add it on our little steps fill it with snow nice All right, now, just gotta add your little snow. And add the little snowdrops anywhere you want. All right. <laughs> All right. And now you have completed your beautiful winter wonderland. I hope you enjoyed painting with me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for supporting the National Art Honor Society. Again, my name is Lenore Boozy, and you just painted a beautiful winter wonderland. Have an excellent rest of your break.